kitchen, clean clothes. And then I wanted my license. I wanted a social security, my, my social security uh, card. I wanted to get my life back in order in that way. And I came out working at making copies. I was the best in the West. Yo era el mejor fotocopiadero del, del West. Wow. You wanted a copy? So I was making minimum wage. And you know what I've learned? That you, whatever you do in life, that you just work hard. In prison, I worked seven days a week. I was making 12 cents an hour. And one of the most gratifying moments of that work experience was that um, my ex, uh, the cops from prison, which they got retired, they came to visit me at one of my locations. And that was very gratifying to, to see my, my boss, the, the, you know, the, in, prison. The, in prison, you know, and he was crying for me. I was like, he was so happy. He went to, to one of your restaurants? To one of my restaurants. And we That's took amazing. Some, and he, they were going to a Dodger game. He brought about 15 of his family members. They, he wanted them to meet me. And, That's sorry. And that, was, and that was very gratifying. I have the pictures. I was like, wow. So, uh, because, you know, I am a prisoner. I did mess up. And, and for them to actually believe in you while even in prison, um, you know, was very gratifying. I worked seven days a week. I was the uh, the plumber. I worked uh, 12 cents an hour, and then I, I went to 17 cents an hour. And I think I got my raise at, I think it was 29 cents an hour. So I was making top dollar. <laughs> top, top dollar in <laughs> top prison. Top dollar in prison. 20 bucks a month. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so going back to the conversation, is your cousin? Yeah. Your, your primo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was suchero. He was a suchero. And then... Uh, You decided to go into business. You well, no, I get, I got out. I'm making copies, and then I, and then I got a job making, uh, doing air conditioning, a trade that I learned in, in the, in prison, técnico de aire acondicionado. And so, comencé a trabajar en esto, and este, he, he arrives in the, in the states. Uh, I, um, I, I asked, you want to stay with me? You can stay with me. I just wanted to help him, you know, because when I was a kid, his mom gave me housing. She helped me. She dressed me. She fed me, and here I have an opportunity just to give back. And here's, he's the only child. He lost his mother. And even though I was out of prison, I was working. And, and I go, at the very least, I can do something for him. So tell me the moment when you thought that sushi could be a good business. Well, uh, it started, I started, I wanted to go into business. I always love food. It's one of the, my passions is food. I, even though I'm, I don't have no culinary experience, I've never been to The Cordon Bleu schools. I never, I've never had. Um, se me quemaba mama, se me quemaban los huevos, los huevos yeah. rancheros quemaba <laughs> <laughs> en el microwave. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, I don't have any experience. I just knew that I loved the food. When I was 16, I used to work at Subway, and I love just serving food. I love giving hospitality. I knew that much, and once he arrives, I, I think I go, man, maybe we can do something different. And I was I wanted to buy a lunch truck, but they're very expensive. So I went on to Craigslist, Fernando, and I and I and I went to Tijuana Craigslist. Did you know there's yeah, a amazing. Craigslist in Tijuana? I didn't know. Yeah. Didn't so you know. go to Tijuana and I and I and I put maybe it goes maybe somebody out there took a lunch truck that they don't want it anymore. Maybe I'll catch a deal. And I didn't find one. But then I put carreta, which is cart. Yeah. And I found this hot dog cart looking thing that said sushi island and it was uh 18 mil pesos like eight um which is equivalent of fifteen hundred dollars so you found that in tijuana i found that in places. tijuana of all places so <laughs> and the guy it was funny because the guy worked as a, a carrocero body shop and so he built it himself That guy in that night, he was a suchero as well in Tijuana. That, that's amazing yeah, because like a carreta could be for tacos. But it could have been for tacos. Or whatever, yeah. but it was sushi and you it were was just sushi. looking for that. Yeah. So when I saw that, it was actually said sushi island. I go, I go, dude, look, they do sushi. It's not a lunch truck, but, it's, but it looks like a cart. And, and I think you think we can, I only had $1,800 that I had saved for my job. I go, I can invest that. You know, I'm willing to invest All, I was all in, $1,800. <laughs> and so I made the investment. One of my friends went to go look at it, and he goes, it works great. We, we tried to cross it over the border, but it didn't have uh, American plates. So they denied it. And so my friend rented a U-Haul trailer, put it on top of the U-Haul trailer, 
And next thing you know, la famosa carreta was in the state. So that was your start? That was my start on a hot dog cart. So I asked my primo, I go, I go hey, listen, you got any pictures of this Mexican sushi? And he, and, and, and he did. So then I got those pictures and I went to a little print shop. I spent like 80 bucks and we made some some stickers and because people are not going to know. I didn't know it was sushi. <laughs> Let alone Mexican sushi, right? Right, right, right. So the names were like the Racha Road, the Tres Quesos, and the, like, what is that? Yeah. Right? But people, when they would come up to it, they would see a picture. So I bought a general on Craigslist. I went to restaurant supply stores looking for a fryer basket. Next thing you know, I was on the streets. I was in business. And people used to ask me, Papa, ¿qué tipo de tacos vende? <laughs> no vendo tacos. ¿Qué vende? What do you sell? I sell sushi on the street. <laughs> and, and so that's how, that's how I began. But it, it, it was not legal. Oh. So I would get tickets. Oh. Now, you got a cart, la carreta. La carreta. And la then, carreta. Uh, you had the name already? No, I didn't. It, 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 I left it at Sushi Island, but the gordito, I would, we would, we bought markers and we, you know, we painted it. Who is it. gordito? His name was A. Oh, so uh, yeah. that's your, your cousin. Yeah, because he's the, the one that. The Ligo Gordito de Karim. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he's the Gordito. <laughs> he's M a big guy. Actually. Mucho sushi, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you know, and he claims he, he does he eats well. And I go, well, how do you get to that weight if you eat well? So, I love that guy. Anyways, but, so like, you, you, were, you had your card, yeah, uh, yeah. Sushi Island. And then how did you decide to jump into an actual brick and mortar Location but, well, and change the name to it, it, what is Suchi Loco today. Well, when I started, I was on a cart, but I got to, you know, there was one time I got the cops said, Listen, kid, you had two hours to get away from this. You don't got no permits, you can't be here. You have to have permits because you can get somebody sick. I mean, you know, there's health temperatures, right? right there's right. a lot of regulations, and, and, and rightfully so, because at the end of the day, It's the public's uh, health that's at stake. You know, I wouldn't want my kid to get sick. And there's salmonella. Right, right. Sure. So I get it now. But I, I didn't give up there. I ended up going to a tire shop. I filled that place up. The guy said, you got to go. And finally, I went home. I said, you know what? I got a job. What am I doing? I'm out of prison. I got a job. I'm going to get married. What am and so I did it out of my house. So I parked this cart at my house. Mm -hmm. Fridays and Sundays. After five. Because... There was no inspectors around. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. <laughs> That's a good Yeah, so don't do it when the city's around. <laughs> Set us five. <laughs> After five. And, so, and then on Saturday, I was reserved for my wife because I was courting her. And and, yeah, and she, she was my girlfriend at the time. And, uh, and you know, she would come every 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 day, every Friday and Sunday. She would, she would always be there. And one of the lessons that I learned in business is that, you know, if you're going to make a mistake – that your wife is your business partner. She's the best asset you got in business. They can either make you or break you. And my wife has made me uh, the man that I am today because she doesn't let me give up. She gives me sound advice. She keeps my head clear. And if you, if you don't have a good partner, it's hard to stay in business. Because right, because it's tough. Right, because it's tough. It's, that's the love of your life. You've invested everything in, in, in this relationship. And in business, you need all hands on deck. And you need that, that partner, that teamwork. That you need, and that is your wife. And so she's been there every step of the way. She was a server. She was a cook. She was, every, she was my accountant. So, but you were still working from home. Yes. And the cart. From the cart. Right, from the cart. Now... When or how did you decide that maybe I can open my own restaurant? Yeah, well, it started with, uh, there was a, a singer called Gerardo Ortiz that right. one, day, one day calls me up and he says, Copa, are you open? I go, I'm not open. Uh, why not? Because I only open on Fridays. What if you come tomorrow? And it's Thursday. And he goes, well, I can't go tomorrow. So to make a long story short, he says, if you open up, it's going to go well. I didn't know who he was, Gerardo Ortiz, but... It, He's, he's a very of famous course, singer. Very famous singer. And Mexican. I didn't know nothing about Facebook. I didn't know nothing about Instagram. Nothing. I was fresh out of the, the I mean, jail. Um, and he shows up at my house. And it's crazy. My house is full of people. 
I sold out in 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 about two hours, and there's cars everywhere. He goes, you know what? I'm going back to prison. I can't believe that. But he put <laughs> me on the map, and he put me on social media, La Carreta. What year are you talking about now? This is uh, in the year 2010. In 2010. That's when I really, I was doing this in 2010. Okay. And then it eventually it took off after that. So at that point, when I saw these people coming to my house every Friday and Sunday, I did it for eight months. I'm surprised I never got caught. So, <laughs> wow. but I, I realized I have something special. That was the moment that you thought yeah, about it. I go, wow, I can do this in a life setting. And um, I asked my mom if I could refinance her house. She took out $52,000. She believed in me. I think she was been the only one that's believed in me aside from, from my wife. My dad said, don't do it. My, everybody said, Frank, you, you, you're an electrician. You're a, you're an air conditioning technician. What are you doing when you're just out of prison? You don't know what you're getting yourself into, you know? And I believed otherwise. Yeah. And they say that generally speaking, the worst advice that you can get comes from your family and friends. <laughs> I mean, they're always against the, uh, you know, the uncertainty. They want you to, you know, keep straight, safe. you know, safe. And, and then I had a, I had a, a whole history of mess ups. So right. they knew that I, you know, this kid needs to stay focused and, you know, but I, I, I didn't listen to that advice and I gave it a go. And next thing you know. In 2000, uh, it was in 2011, I was in the restaurant business, and it, it, I didn't know anything about the restaurant business, but I negotiated a lease. I called the guy when I was negotiating the lease. I go, hey, how much you want for this rent? And I goes, $3,000. And I, you don't got anything for 1000 And he goes, it's not a discount store. <laughs> and the trick is negotiating a good lease. I did not know it at the time. That's Critical, isn't it? Yeah. As traffic. Yeah. Location and a good contract. Yes. Go, For a restaurant, of basically, course. Well, or you, service. I learned three things. That in order to be successful, you need three things. One of them, you need a concept. I didn't know it then, but I had a concept. It was Mexican sushi. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that you, the second thing you need is, where are you going to give it at? And I, I found the location. And then to whom you were going to give it to? So it was the concept, location, and to whom? Positioning. But, right, positioning yourself. And I realized that there was an audience for that, that there was Latinos. It was uh, a bunch of Latinos that loved this concept. Where do you learn all this from? I mean, were you reading a book or well, something? Well, I was lost and confused. And uh, my brother was, was um, the guy that kind of gave me my first cell phone when I got out of prison. I asked him a lot of questions. And finally, he gets tired of my questioning. He goes, Frank, I got something for you. I'm going to introduce you to somebody. And like, who can he be possibly talking about? And I go, this is Google. Stop asking me so many questions. <laughs> and that's Google. Mr. Google. <laughs> he goes like this. Pregúntale a Google. Googlealo. Si tienes una pregunta, ask Google. And I go, are you kidding with me? No, ask Google. I think he was. But, uh, but you know what? So one day I found myself, what, what do restaurant professionals do? And I found a page called restaurantowner.com. And I met a man called Jim Laub. And he's my mentor in the restaurant business. And so from I, there you learn. Yeah, because he gave you schematics. that he say financial strategies, how to open a restaurant, how to close a restaurant, what do successful restaurant tours do. And I started to really learn. Something I learned in prison was, uh, uh, you know, I would read books and self-taught. Right. The plumbing, I would read books and I would go and... Ex so what would be... I mean, you were talking about the three... The three concepts to be concepts. successful. Now, what else have you seen that is terrible from other entrepreneurs that are trying to open or jump into the restaurant or the food industry? They're emotional. They say, you know what? I have the best... And my abuelitas enchiladas are the best. And, and people tell them, oh, these enchiladas are the best. And, and and you can, why don't you open a restaurant and sell your abuelitas enchiladas? But they didn't have a plan. The concept was your abuelitas enchiladas. And the thing is that across the street, the lady Doña Cuca has the best enchiladas in town. And just because you, your grandmas are the best or you thought they were the best. So did he, 
people don't have a 